So today we'll be going over what's called stress concentrations. So let's say we have a rectangular plate with an external load P being applied. And so this rectangular, rectangular plate is in tension. Now, if you were to actually calculate the stress right at the center of this bar, you could actually draw the stress concentrations and of course solve for the stress for this rectangular plate. So here is the stress distribution along this segment of this rectangular plate where this is the stress and of course we already know that stress is equal to the external load divided by the cross-sectional area of this plate. Now what happens if you happen to have a hole at the center of this plate? Now you have the same rectangular plate with the same exact dimensions, the same external load being applied, it being in tension. Now if you were to analyze the stress in this plate, this is, once you have a hole here, it will introduce the stress concentration. Um, the second the stress is distributed along here, the second it gets close to the hole, it's actually, um, with that sudden change in area, this is where you get that uh, larger stress value or a stress concentration, which is what we call it. So let me draw, go ahead and draw the stress distribution. And so as you see here, you start with a lower stress value here. However, the second you start going to where that hole is or where that sudden change of cross-sectional area occurs, you have that stress concentration where you have the maximum stress value here. So whenever you have an object with a certain cross-sectional area and there's some shape or feature within that object that suddenly changes the cross-sectional area, that's where you're going to have a stress stress concentration, whether it could be a sharp corner or it could be, in this case, a hole. So now the question is, how do you solve for this maximum stress? Well, previously we know that this stress value is the average stress within the plate, the average axial stress. And so when it comes to solving for the maximum stress, in this case, would be equal to the stress concentration factor k times the average stress because when it comes to designing parts we always want to look, we always want to design for the worst case scenario and in this case we want to design concerning the maximum stress not the average because we do not want the part to fail so we're going to consider a maximum stress and make sure the object can withstand that much stress so this is the equation that we're going to be utilizing and I'll actually show a table for the stress concentration factors for a rectangular plate with a hole. So there are specific values for K that you're going to look up uh, in a graph. And that's how you solve for the stress concentration. You calculate your average stress. Keep in mind the average stress, it deals with the cross-sectional area at this point. So you're not considering the cross-sectional area of the hole here. Just keep that in mind. So just to reiterate, um, when it comes to solving for, for the maximum stress with a rectangular plate and a hole, this would be your average stress, right? You're considering the cross-sectional area without the cross-sectional area of the hole within that plate. This would be your average. And of course, this is the equation you're going to be using to solve for the maximum stress, which will be used for designing the parts. Now, similarly, when you have a plate with corners, in this case, these corners have a radius R here, you would also have a stress concentration here due to that sudden change in cross-sectional area from this point to this point. Right at this location, you're going to have that stress concentration. So drawing out the stress distribution here at this location is, Right where you have that sudden increase in cross-sectional area here is your maximum stress on both ends due to that sudden change in cross-sectional area. And this below would be the average stress, right? Just take into account this small cross-sectional area and the equation stays the same. The maximum stress is equal to the stress concentration factor K times the average stress. And that K factor is also looked up in the graph, which I will show here um, with the given parameters, dimensions, and so forth. You could solve for that stress concentration factor and get the maximum stress. So let's go ahead and do a, a example here. So the problem statement is 
the steel bar has a di dimension shown, determine the maximum the maximum axial force P that can be applied so not to exceed an allowable tensile stress of 150 megapascal. So we're given the maximum allowable stress that this part can experience is 150 megapascals. Now we have the given dimensions. In this case, it actually has a thickness to this plate of 20 millimeters and the corners have a radius of 15 millimeters. And so we could already see that we have two locations where there's going to be stress concentrations, right? We have one in the middle due to the hole and we have another one due to the corner here. So these two locations are the locations of interest because we know that that's where this object is going to experience the maximum stress and therefore we need to design accordingly such that these points do not experience uh, stress more greater than the 150 megapascals given for this design. So now in this case we're going to have to solve for the maximum stress at these two locations. Let's go ahead and solve for the stress concentration at the hole first. So the first factor when you're looking at the graphs for the stress concentration we have the parameter 2R divided by W. In this case, the W is the width of this plate, 60 millimeters, and 2R is the, essentially the diameter of this hole. So it's 24 millimeters divided by 60 millimeters, which gives us a value of 0 0.4. So now going to the value of 0 0.4 and going up to the line in that graph, we go to the left hand side to get our K value, which is 2.2. So this is the stress concentration factor that we need to solve for the maximum stress. So now what exactly is the average stress in this? Well, if you're looking at the graph, you have that formula, right? Which is just the cross-sectional area of this rectangle, but you need to take away um, the dimensions of that hole. So you have that equation. And plugging in for the values, we have the value P divided by 720 millimeters squared because this is a cross section area. Now P is the actual value that we're trying to solve. Now using that um, equation of the maximum stress is equal to the stress concentration factor times the average. Now in this case, we are trying to solve for the maximum external load such that we won't exceed the allowable stress. So this essentially is the maximum for our design and we have our k factor the only thing in this equation that is unknown would be the p and we just go ahead and solve for the p or the external load so just keeping everything in variable form the maximum stress is the allowable divided by the k factor times w take away 2r times t which is essentially just a cross sectional area here and this is the equation to solve for the external load now after you plug in all the values just keep in mind to keep all the units consistent so all the units cancel out and you get the appropriate unit for the load in this case and so this gives us p equal to 49 kilonewtons now keep in mind this is not the answer just yet right this is only concerning the stress concentration at the hole however at the radius we need to solve for the stress concentration to see what's the maximum load that it could handle so for the corner, when you're looking at the graph, one of the parameters is R divided by the H, and we see that's 15 millimeters divided by 30, which gives us 0.5. This is our first parameter found in the graph here. The second parameter is W divided by H, which is 60 millimeters divided by 30, which is equal to 2. And that gives us a stress concentration factor of 1.4. And so now going ahead and solving for the average stress is equal to that load divided by the cross-sectional area, which in this case is HT. This would be your average. And then again, doing that same equation, the maximum stress is equal to stress concentration factor times the average. We already have we already know the maximum allowable stress. And so we go ahead and solve for our P which is the, ma the maximum allowable stress times the cross-sectional area divided by stress concentration factor, which gives us 
64 kilonewtons for the other stress concentration factor. So now the question is, what is the maximum load that this plate can handle? Well, we see we have a value of 49 kilonewtons that this could handle at the hole, and we have 64 kilonewtons that the plate could handle at the corner. So now you choose the lowest value. Because if you happen to exceed the 64 kilonewtons at the corner, you will be fine. However, it must not be exceeded at the location of the hole, and therefore you have to go with the lowest um, external load that you saw for these for a more conservative to not exceed the allowable stress. So you have to look at all the different locations and see what gives you the worst case scenario. In this case, 49. if you go above 49 kilonewtons, you're going to exceed the allowable stress at the hole. You won't exceed it at the corner. However, you will exceed it at the hole. So you always choose the lowest value P. And this is how you solve problems dealing with stress concentrations when it comes to any holes or any sharp corners or corners with radiuses.